Right. Hello again, everybody. Right. Hello. He's back. I'm back. He, he came back. I was invited back. He remembered where I lived. <laughs> Satnav. Really must get into a Satnav and delete my address. Um, <laughs> then you won't get driven to airsofting. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't have a car. Um, <laughs> he's my ferry. He's my catering department. <laughs> he's, he's Thin Brand Line Mobile. That's us. us. Mm. Anywho, on to um, the reason we're actually here. Um, I mentioned in the last video with Imminent, um, when we did his MP5, that we've got a slightly younger gun to um, go through of his today. Um, well, I'm just going to show you. It's a lot heavier than the MP5. It is the GNG ARP556. AEG. Well, see you later. No, not really, I'm lying. Um, <laughs> it's fairly similar to like your Firehawks and your Firehogs and things like that, but um, God, is it loud. Um, when, when he first got it delivered, he, um, one of our other team members delivered it to mine because it's sort of halfway between the two addresses. Um, and we made the mistake of putting the battery in it in my kitchen and then firing it. Ow. My ears bled. It's my loud. You can hear this bloody thing from one end of a map to the other end of the map at the site we mainly play at. It's loud. You know when he's firing this thing. Subtle. Yeah, subtlety is not his strong point. Oh, it is. I'm as subtle as a brick through a plate glass window. Don't you judge me. Subtlety is not his strong point. <laughs> Anywho, on to the actual review. Um, this is full metal, with the exception of, ignore the hand grip, he's put that on himself. That actually came off of a um, 50 quid um, <laughs> for BB guns for less. Special. Double Eagle M4. Reminds me, I need to order a stubby one. Plastic fantastic thing, but it does the job. Yeah. For now. Um, but yes, from the end of the barrel right the way back to there. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. that is plastic. Right the way back to <laughs> the Steve Buffer tube, um, with the exception of, obviously, the hand grip. And the um, trigger. Yeah, I didn't realise the trigger was plastic. And the trigger um, is all metal. Obviously, the, the hand, gr hand grip and the... Uh, the trigger and the fire select actually as well. Yeah. It's plastic and even your even your forward assist, which does zip, is metal. Um, I think that's also metal, isn't it? Yep. Even the dust covers metal. Anyway, um, we don't like this stock, do we? No. This stock, it's it's a nice looking, nice functioning, fairly comfortable stock when you shoulder it. It's a sod to adjust. And, because you need like 12 hands, and it expects you to fit one of them, which doesn't seem difficult, into this here little buffer tube with all that lot, the MOSFET and the, uh, the fuse and obviously the Tamiya connector. It's snug. Very snug. I think... Um, Tight as a nun's crutch was one of the terms used. Yeah, it's tight. Mm. No need to say more. Um, so he's looking at getting a probably a crane stock because the uh, you've got a bit more space either side because you've got a nice angle and you'll probably end up with something like a nunchuck style one that fits better. In fact, Steph's got a nunchuck style one. Oh, okay. He's got a treble in the in his um, UAR. That thing's nuts. Which I've got a video on. <coughs> Or will have uh, uploaded fairly soon. Anyway, yes, the uh, it's not the best designed wiring, anyway, um, in my opinion, and probably your opinion actually as well, because yes. <coughs> it's quite difficult to get it all in there. And we've had some issues with the lipo batteries. We think they may be overheating because how tightly compacted everything's in there. Might not be that. Might just be a duff battery, but we'll find out. Anywho. Right, um, the controls on this are fully ambidextrous. The mag release, even the 
non I think I don't think the bolt release is functional, is it? No, all it does no. is open the dust cover. Yeah. No, I'm on about the actual bolt release. Oh, no, that no. The bolt release is non functional, it's just pretty and it does nothing. Um, but the mag release is on both sides. You've got it yep, just there above your trigger finger on the right, and same again on the left. Slightly lower on the left, but it's on the left. And same with your fire controls. Again, you've got safe, semi, and full auto. I've just done that in reverse, that's now in safe. Um, this has got the programmable MOSFET. Um, if I remember rightly, you'll probably know better than this, but you have to hold the trigger in for... Yes, yeah, set it to full auto, hold it down for 10 seconds, a good 10 seconds. A real earth 10 seconds, not an airsoft 10 seconds. Um, <laughs> let it go, and then it should, and does occasionally, go into three round burst. So you can set it safe, semi, three round, or safe, semi, full, or I believe you can do safe, three round, full, can't you? No. No, is it just the first two, right? But programmable MOSFET, it's semi programmable for MOSFET, but. You found it quite works quite well on um, the three round, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. It, three round is definitely very uh, is is the go to mode when you're using uh, standard wheel wheel mag high caps. This thing does kick them out at twenty five rounds a second. Yeah, it's about twenty five rounds per second. And one thing we should add is the internals on this are out of the box stock. If you get, if you're looking into getting one and you know zip about teching, you don't want to have to send it away and pay to have it teched on. Um, you don't trust anybody to do it to, to get one. They don't need anything doing to them um, other than getting the right weight BBs for them. Now it's suggested weight is what's it two, two fives? Two fives, yeah. Point two fives. Um, after trial and error. Um, with myself and Matt, we've gone through and found 0.28 a better. Last time out, we was trying the 0.25s and it was just shooting about 30 metres, which is what, about 90 feet? Something like that. Near, near our 90 feet, but they were going <laughs> on full hop. Um, switched to two eights and easily hitting, was shooting at about a foot wide tree. Yeah. And we could only see half of it because half of it was behind netting. Yeah, which my mouse says we could see half of, and it was easily hitting that would have shot further. So if you're going to get one, 0.28, don't waste money on 0.25s for it because you'll be going, I'm shooting him! And, and point, he 0.2s just don't, don't even bother with. No, don't even bother with 0.2s. Um, now, he's, he's done this bit here, this doesn't come like that. But that Thin brown line! Part of our team and our team colours, but anyway, um, it's got flip-up sights. I can't remember if these are spring-loaded. They're not, are they? No. Uh, now, I personally hate this style of rear sight. Little post with a tiny little hole in it. I don't like that sort of rear, rear sight. I prefer your more like um, your standard M4 style rear sights. Um, if I'm going to have iron sights, but the front is just a post with the wings to protect it, so they don't get broken. Um, both are. Uh, windage adjustable. This one's got a little wheel that you adjust, and same on the. Uh, I'm going to come from so you can see it. I don't know if you can see that very well. We've got a little wheel there, and I'm going to try not to take me, me phone out. There we go. Uh, focus. Don't know what I'm shaking because this is never going out near the front. <laughs> it's got a little up print on there, so you can. Well, so you know what you're doing. It's got the M lock style, which is covered up actually mostly. Yeah. M lock style. Uh, mounting system on the sides here, standard Picatinny on the top, and um, is that M lock on the bottom? It is M lock, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'll put Picatinny on. Yeah, M lock on the bottom, um, and he's got the key mod um, Picatinny rail on the bottom of there. <clears throat> um, difference between this and the ARP9 is this is actually chambered. Chambered. <laughs> this, <laughs> this takes M4 Stag style mags, so it's. Main reason we went for it is because we all tend to run something that's got M4 style mags in it, so it saves if we're out and about and we go, oh no, I've got no ammo, save stopping, filling little bottles yeah. and just chat, chuck me a mag. It, it's, it's usually you that's run out of mags, isn't it? That is because I tend to use my gun as a support weapon. <laughs> <laughs> well, you 
some of you have probably seen my uh, my L85. Well, I tend to stick that on the edge of a building or something, stick a nice large auto winder mag in and go dagger, 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 which keeps people docking because, yeah, mine's fairly close to sight limits on a decent rate of fire, but it's also quite loud. And especially when we're on one of the tank fields that they've got nothing but ammo boxes. You stick the handguard of that on them, and it sounds like somebody's got an actual auto cannon going like that at you. It's awesome. Especially now I've got the blowback put back on it. Because <laughs> I'm a child. Um, but anyway, back to this. Uh, again, as with his MP5, actually, the motor is accessible through the hand grip, I do believe. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. um, it's just two little hand key bolts, and then that pops out, and you can get in there to your motor. Um, these. It's supposed to be a quick change spring as well, isn't it? Apparently. Yeah. But it's a bit more of a faff to get to than... <laughs> this is why I don't like this. Because you need 20 hands to get the thing on top. It's supposed to be a quick change spring, I think. I've got to double check. Pull all the wiring out. Yes. Yeah. You need a... I well, don't know if that's going to focus at all on there. But you might... Ah, there you go. Just see down there, there's an owl. You need a whacking grip Allen bolt. I think it's an Allen bolt. No, it's not. It's a whacking grip Phillips um, to unscrew the stock, and then you can get into the spring and sweep the, that out. So technically, it's a quick change, but you do need a massively long screwdriver to get in there. Now, we're talking something like that, this sort of length. Shut up. Um, <laughs> I know you're mouthing it. <laughs> but... I'll say te technically quick change string, spring if you've got the right size. Screwdriver. <laughs> Anywho, it is quite a weighty gun, so if you're only a little young and your arms might get tired. But Thank you for your concern. Yes. Anybody who watches my channel knows I'm concerned about the young guns, especially like when I'm trying to show off like a whacking dress sniper rifle that's taller than half of them. Um, now, as with most M4 style guns, it has got, when I can hold it properly, your charging handle back here, which does drop down the dust cover. Unfortunately, it doesn't lock back, so if you need to adjust the hulk, which again is in there, you just about see it, it's the uh, wheel type hop. You have to hold it open and then fiddle about the hop um, until you get it right, and then you have to manually put the dust cover back up. Um, this thing, yes, I was saying about this thing out of the box is you really don't need to upgrade it. Last time out on point twos, wasn't it? You crowded it on. Yeah. Um, well, might I tell you? The highest I saw was three forty-seven, and probably the lowest was three forty-three. That's out of the box with the suggested recommended battery in batteries in it. With the recommended battery, which is a eleven. Uh, yeah, then speaking ish, 11.1 volt LiPo. So, out of the box, you don't need to upgrade it. It will fire all day long at um, CQB safe limits, basically. Near eye, bang on the limit, which is more than Just enough. what I wanted. Yes. Um, we're, not, we're certainly not planning on doing any upgrades to it unless something breaks. Touch wood, it doesn't, but if something breaks, that's when upgrades will be done to it. I mean, for now, I mean, it has got what I think, I haven't got calipers, you've probably seen on one of my other videos, to measure it properly, but it looks like a 6.04 or a 6.05 um, in a barrel. Um, but it doesn't seem to affect accuracy or, or, or distance, does it? Not on 2.8s, no. Not on 2.8s. On, on point twos. Anything much beyond sort of 10 metres, you've got to aim at the floor because they just go up and hit, hit the angels. Yep. Um, even when you wind the hop up right back. Um, and 0.25, so they go <clears throat> and do a nosedive. 0.28, uh, yeah, I've, I've not played with it in with enemies. <clears throat> no, um, we, we, we tested these just as we was practically leaving last time uh, with 0.28s, but the range and the consistency... Um, are pretty damn good. Um, uh, yes, yeah, it is very loud. Um, when I fire over on my teammate's head, they invariably leave a thick brown smudge on the ground. Um, One of the reasons why we're called Thin Brown Line. Um, 
Right, moving back to the gun. It has got, because um, it's G&G, &G, they, well, they tend to go a bit um, stamp happy and get lots of stuff written all over it, but on the rear of the gun, on the stock, you've got uh, some markings there. Oh, I can't remember what they say. GOS-V5, I don't know what that means. On the other, reverse, uh, off, opposite side of the stock, it's got GG armament there. On the side of the gun, you've got... Complete AEG series, manufactured by G&G Armour, made in Tyre 1 uh, there. A nice G&G Armament sign there, and then as you can see, it's got model G&G Intermediate, sorry, Cal 0.6mm AEG, and then it's got its, uh, it's got its little serial number there. Um, on the front, it's got... Focus. Hello. Oh, I can't even hold it still. Uh, on the front... There we go. It's got G&G armament again there, and on the opposite side, it's got the M-lock. Well, on both sides, it's got the M-lock insignia there, and it's got M-lock type rail system there as well. So it's, it's got quite a few markings on it. Not that it makes a blind bit of difference. Oh, it's even got the G&G armament on the bottom of there as well, on the bottom of the pistol grip. But... Uh, yeah, it's just a nice little compact job, and it, it is designed for sort of CQB environments, but don't let that put you off. We don't use it for CQB. We play at a woodland site where you've got nice, big, open areas. With 0.28s, this thing doesn't have any issues in it. I think um, you were speaking to some uh, speed softers. <laughs> um... <coughs> Sorry, let me just watch that dirty taste like my mouth. Mm. Oh yeah, that's better. <laughs> and what did they say that they they run? Because a fair few of them were using these and ARP9s. And what did they say they were running on? Yeah, two eights. Yeah. There you go. They were running point two eights. Um, more for the accuracy they were running for, though, weren't they? Yeah. Which um, we've got. Which we've now got, but it's and also the got the range. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it again, like I say. He has got silly magazines for this as well. Thousand round auto winder. Not as big as the one through his MP5, but yeah, the, the thousand rounders, and they look like double stack. Mm. So you've got the fake bullets and top. Look quite cool as well. So coming around the corner, that's sticking out of it. Looks um, comical, but then people duck when they hear it start firing. Oh boy, do they duck. <laughs> and not stop firing till a hand goes, I'm in it! Because and it hits. We, we, we don't like non hit callers. No. I have it on very good authority, it hits hard. I wouldn't know, I've not been shot by it. We can arrange that. I'm not dumb enough to be on the opposite team. <laughs> um, but yes, that is the G&G armament. Um, oh yes, for the, those of you who are actually interested in the actual tech specs, it's got V2 gearbox. Um, probably a standard V2. Um, I don't we, we've actually not even bothered looking at the insides of this because it doesn't need anything doing to it so i don't know what the piston's like what you know whether it's all metal tooth half metal tooth no metal tooth whatever but i have it on good authority they are actually fairly decent inside anyway um well the gg so they're not crap they are fairly decent in fact some of the better ones um but yes it's got the electronic trigger mosfet uh takes tag mags um, that's pretty much about it, isn't it? There's mm. nothing else that I've missed, is there, as far as you're aware? No. Um, you can you can make it quieter if you're a real <laughs> pansy. We don't make them quieter, we make them louder. Um, but yeah, th there is a... Through the M-lock in the nose of the gun, you will find a, a little Allen key bolt to undo the what they call the cookie cutter on the front. Um, if you go on YouTube. There are loads of people taking mole grips to it to rip them off, but no, there is a little Allen key bolt as far as the first, down as far as the first M lock, so it will come off quite easy. And it works as a um, it works as a as a loudener, that thing does. And it works. Yes, because basically, <clears throat> although with any AAG, most of the noise comes from the gearbox. Quite a bit of noise comes out of there, mm -hmm. and because it's got that whacking grip thing like that, it makes it loud. In fact, you know what? I'm going to put the back... Just for you nice people. Don't tell you about that. 
that guy that was hiding behind the tree and I fired over, over the top of him and he shat himself. I'm not surprised because this thing is like, you'll find out. All right, here we go. Yeah. One of the very few airsoft guns that you, you pretty much want ear defenders. And just because I'm a massive child, are you ready? I'm actually going to move this towards the microphone. Enjoy your hearing. <laughs> That's why people shat themselves when you fire over the head of them and they're not expecting it when they're on your own team. And he turns up and goes, Just stand still a minute. Yeah. Oh dear. How sad. Never mind. So when your ears stop bleeding, um, I've got a couple more review videos coming up. Um, some more Bonza stuff. Um, hopefully some more of my stuff if I can find the time to, to record the videos. Um, but for now, I do believe... Christmas special. Oh, yes. We've got some rather interesting stuff coming up. Um, I'm not going to delve into specifics. Um, yeah, that we've got something particularly heavy coming up, haven't we? Like... Very chuffing heavy. Um, we've got something. It's probably the oldest gun you've ever you'll have ever done a review on. Yeah, it's even older than my SA eighty, mm. and that takes some beating. Mm. Let's let's say it's probably actually first manufacture date. It's probably older than me. And me. Yeah, and I'm thirty two. And I'm thirty two with experience. He's old. <laughs> um, but yes, that, that thing is proper heavy. We know we've lugged it about for a full day. Two? Hey, you two. I've done it for one day. <laughs> I want Dom enough to go back. <laughs> um, but yes, we've got that coming up. Not going to tell you what it is, but like I say, some, some of you military geeks, shall we say, mm. will find that one interesting. I know Mr. Walker, who's probably going to be watching this, He'll find that one interesting. He's seen it. I think he's held it. I think he's almost as tall as him. That doesn't surprise me. He's Frodo. <laughs> um, then we've got... I don't know whether we're going to do this before or after the, uh, the, the big heavy job, but we've got something... The most powerful um, gun I will have reviewed. Mm -hmm. For now. Um, then a bit of a laugh on certain instruments we've used over the past year. If any of you, you, you watching know, you know how twisted we are. You know pretty much what's coming. <laughs> um, and I might just chuck up midweek or something at some point, a gag reel, you know, coming up to Christmas with some of the daft shite that we've got up to. Us? Daft shite? Never. No, it's all completely sane and above board. Mm. We fit in really well where we go. Yeah, they've got nice white coats that do up the back. Yeah. Um, anyway, but that, that's, that's, that's three videos coming up. I actually, whilst filming this one, I had a brilliant idea for a new build that I'm going to do. That thing's going to be a proper wolf in sheep's clothing, isn't it? Now, some of you have seen some of my other builds. This one's going to be scary. I think scary factor, it might even top the SAWTF. That's saying something. <laughs> but for now, thanks for watching. Thin brown line. Thick brown smudge. <laughs>